Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Time for another naval battle. I was looking back through our history of naval battles and we've done like way over a hundred. We've done loads of modern 2020s plus carrier battles. In fact, I made this little graphic, at least the ones I saw, 17, 2020, 2025 and 2026 carrier battles and they've been cool but we're a little bit burnt out of modern stuff stealths and hypersonic missiles and stuff and so we figured we'll spend a month or so going back and doing the pre 2000s battles to a modern quality so 1960s 70s 80s and 90s and today we're starting with mid 90s russian versus u.s carrier strike groups First, overview, Russia, one carrier, Kuznetsov, one Kirov battlecruiser, two uh, Slava cruisers, and three frigates, anti-submarine, 11540 class. Air wing, her maximum, 24 Su-33s in air-to-air, -air, plus humans, two AWACSs and two shovels, and we'll come back to shovels later, something I want to try out. Total, seven ships, 26 AI aircraft. America, one CV supercarrier, two 1990s spec Ticonderoga cruisers, and four destroyers, Oli Burke 2A from the 1990s. Air wing, four squadrons, two squadrons F-14B Tomcat air-to-air, -air, 32 of them, two squadrons Legacy Hornet, 24 total, anti-ship. Two AWACS and a couple of shovels. Total active aircraft AI 58 and seven ships. It's our normal standard geography. Uh, why have I got it on the coast? Uh, really just so I've got something to look at other than sea for an hour. 200 miles between carriers. Carrier formations are the same in that they will be travelling at over 45 degree offset to the threat axis to make sure we uh, unleash all of the sea whiz and whatnot. There's all the extra stuff we've learned over the years. Formations will be the same 15 by 15 mile box formations with a pinched nose orientated towards the threat axis. So just uh, an example carrier, uh, destroyer, 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 cruiser, cruiser. Uh, destroyer rear guard and that's the setup with balls in the middle let's look at details that start with russia russia has their carrier here we have at the front a kirov battle cruiser a slava cruiser a slava cruiser anti-submarine 11540 11540 11540 in terms of her air wing 24 su 33 ai pretty much the way I, I standardize all my ai now i set it to maximum skill level and then i don't touch anything else i do have other stuff i can do i can change when they fire at the ranges that they fire i can change whether they use the afterburner or not if they drop their fuel tanks and all that stuff and what i've learned and i was just talking to simba about this beforehand through bitter experience of doing over 100 naval battles is the best overall strategy for a game master is just to leave them as they are so i've not told them to do anything other than take off and fight and that's it that just gives the best overall performance for reasons that are actually really complex and we're not going to go into now um we're moving from hugely saturated payloads to uh, more realistic payloads so um, i mean you'll never <laughs> probably see a legacy hornet in pictures with 12 or 14 missiles or whatever it can carry it's just not a realistic loadout uh with these sukhois we've got uh, ecm pods we've got two short range archers uh we've got six alamos uh, two ir and four radar uh these are the extended range alamos from the early to mid 90s so they fit in with today and uh, we have humans uh, respawning in the same specification just beyond the carrier and that is the russians uh, and a couple of AWACS, redundant AWACS back there us symmetrical formations it's just a standard formation it's a realistic b anti-nuclear as per the times the cold war so super carrier and we have a uh, guided cruiser, guided cruiser, and the rest are destroyers. Uh, threat axis that direction there. First, F-14 AI uh, with what I would consider, well, it's probably not a realistic loadout, to be honest, but I need it to be competitive. In real life, F-14s rarely flew with such a big loadout as this, but uh, again, I need it to be competitive, and it absolutely could carry a loadout like this. With so four Phoenixes, what I consider the best one, Mark 60C, uh, the best uh, Sparrow, and the best Sidewinder that it could take at the time uh, 32 of them and then anti-ship if i can find them legacy hornets from the 90s four uh, harpoons they've got two sidewinders i've accidentally put the x-ray model from the 2000s don't worry they almost certainly not use them anyway so it's, it's irrelevant 
We have humans responding, uh, respawning, and you can choose whatever you want. We'll have the same amount on each side, but you can either be a Tomcat, a uh, Hornet, in air to air, uh, with six AIM-120Cs. Uh, they came into service in 1996, so it's allowed today, just about. Oh, X-ray sidewinders. Okay, yep, that's a problem. Viewers, I'll go back and I'll change the X-ray sidewinders to M after I've done this uh, little mini briefing, so uh, there'll be no X-ray sidewinders, because that's a problem. Or they can be anti-ship if they want. I'm not sure where they would want to, but they can. Shovels, um, all assets used today are core game under the overall ownership or control of the core game developers. And because of that, it means I'm going to allow the carriers to operate at their full uh, capacity, all catapults working. Why am I saying that? Well, because if we do a 2020s plus version, that doesn't work very well. The Hornets and whatnot get jammed up on the catapults and the whole carrier breaks down. We've seen it 10 plus times. Because these are all core game assets, I'm expecting the carriers to work. No catapult jams. Or I'll be very annoyed at the developer if they didn't work, put it that way. But I'm sure they will work. Just in case, because there's only one way to test this, viewers, and that is in full multiplayer with all the guys in. In single player, everything works perfectly all of the time, pretty much. Multiplayer, not so much. Uh, I'm putting some shovels in. Both sides get it. That's a couple of F-15 guns only. That's just to clear any jams, but I'm sure we won't need it today. I'll just let you know, viewers. Which leads us on to predictions, guys. Uh, if we look at the uh, overall plates here, obviously, America looks much stronger. It has over twice the air wing, and that's because 1980s, 1990s, US carrier groups, in fact, even now, the aggressive force is based in the aircraft, in the air wing, and the defensive force is based, you know, more or less on the ships. Russia in the 1980s, 1990s was different. They had their offensive force in the ships, the Slavas, Kirovs, they were based around supersonic anti-ship missiles. And that was how they were intended to take on America's uh, carry group, obviously, with just auxiliary, if you like, fighter uh, for defense slash offense. Uh, America, because, mm. you know, America. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be America because, number one, they're going to have the longer range missiles to fire first, and mm. the Russians will have to react and go evasive. So that allows that closure room, mm. uh, whereas the Russians are still kind of stuck to the Fox 2s. Fox 1s, yeah. Um, yeah, Fox 1s and Fox 2s. One of the fic factors here is how effective the Russian air defence is. The Harpoon is not a particularly fast missile. Mm, it's yeah. not the most difficult to shoot down. So if they shoot down enough of them, they're not particularly big either. So get shoot enough of them down and the Russian fleet will survive. And then they'll cause trouble for the Americans. Welcome in, viewers. Back to the 1990s. It's, we are going backwards, but it's also going to be good fun. Simba is American. Matrix is American. Fire is American. Dark, Cannonball, and Bird have made themselves Russian. First of all, you're going to want to have a look around, probably start with the Russians. So we've got, you don't see this very often, 1980s viewers. They had this. They were running a battle cruiser. Four of them. No, three of them, I think Russia actually had. No, four of them. Um, it's an old model, but it's actually a pretty impressive ship, or it was in the 1980s. In fact, this is a two, Slava. Remember, this is what they sunk, the Moskva, uh, the Ukrainians sunk. In the 1980s, these were very good ships, very scary for America. With these supersonic anti-ship missiles oh wow look at that which against the 1980s 1990s carrier group was actually a dangerous threat it's not going to threaten the 2020s group well, that's the march of technology well we'll just sit and watch this viewers kirov battlecruiser will be firing they're actually modernizing one of these at the moment to go back into service in 2024 2025 can you believe that which I have strong uh, views against. I think it's a really stupid idea. But anyway, that's from another day. Let's have a look at these missiles. P500 from the 1980s, maybe even 70s. Uh, Mark 1.4, 1.5. Um, again, in the, 19, in the 1980s, 1990s, it was a scary thing. P700, same deal. S smaller missile, data, fully data-linked missile and whatnot. And um, again, 1990s, it would have scared you. Not really today. You need a stealth missile or a hypersonic missile to do any damage today. Um, let's have a look at uh, what next. Uh, the carriers, why not? Like I said, or if you skip the briefing, which most of you do, today I'm allowing the carriers to operate full. Uh, Milsim, if that's the right word. Uh, planes will come up in the lifts and, and take off at their own discretion. I'm basically trusting the core game to uh, work today. My fingers crossed it will. Uh, even more important for these super carriers, which operate obviously with all the aircraft or, or, or a whole squadron on the deck at once. And they have to manoeuvre around each other and, and hook up to the catapults and stuff. But fingers crossed it won't get jammed. Wait for this guy to go. Are you going to go? There we go. Very impressive sight view as F-14. 
We've got Ollie Burke's twos from the 90s. The missiles they'll be firing is SM2. Uh, a really good missile in the 90s. Uh, to be honest, here's a really interesting thing. Everyone raves about SM3 and SM6 and ESSM and stuff. And, and they're great missiles and they exist and they're on ships now. But still, if you actually went and looked at a real Tyco, modernized, or an Ali Burke 3 in 2023, the majority of the missiles they'd be carrying is still these SM2s. You can't fill a ship with SM6s, it's too expensive. Three ship, 180 nautical miles, flanking right. Roger. Let's have a look at the humans today. Uh, we've got, ooh, look at this, interesting choice. Matrix F14. Why are they going for F14, F F sorry? Uh, well, it's the ideal plane for this, right? It's designed for this, defending the fleet at long ranges and going really fast, and it's really good at it. Always was really good at it. It just became, you know, there was nothing to defend against once the Iron Curtain fell, so it was just no, not that much use anymore. Simba's the same. F-14, fire is F-18, because whatever reason. This is the more realistic loadouts I'm going for viewers. Back in the day, I would have loaded up murder spec, but like I said, you probably wouldn't even have enough missiles on board a carrier to load these things up in murder spec. It's just not, it's fun, but not realistic. AI taking off. We are six minutes in and Matrix is firing friggin' missiles already. Uh, in 54C, Mark 60, at ranges Ranking of right. over 70 nautical miles. So that's pretty impressive. Simba sticking with it. Distance between fronts now of 16 nautical miles. You won't see an Alamo firing beyond about 30 miles. They're pretty ghastly missiles in my opinion, R-27s. Ooh, Simba's done a thing. Simba's done all of the things, I believe. Look how high, how steep those missiles go, viewers. Straight up, pretty much. They've got to get into the um, low air pressure up high, otherwise they become, well, like throwing a car through air, you know, slow down very quickly. Ah, Sam's being fired. Right, it's all about the SM2 now, viewers, as we were saying. Probably still the mainstay, and what would actually probably be fired anything other than a very modern threat, because of cost and, well, they need to use them up as well, don't they? So if you don't need to use an SM3, you'll use an SM2. And pop, well within the remit of an SM2. Oh, oh I'll take that back. Probably just at the extent of the radar. Will any of these get through? Well, even on a 1990s group, you need a lot, a lot of these to actually get through. I'm not sure enough have been fired. Yeah, I get the feeling those SM2s are going to take those missiles down with ease. And each ship has got, what, 50, 60? I can't remember SM2s. A lot of SM2s. Uh, right, air war. No plane shot down yet. Most of those Phoenixes have missed. For unknown reasons. Ah, that one's tracking. Oh, it's an Amram. Ha! All Phoenixes have missed. The one Amram that's been fired is tracking. How telling is that, viewers? And a splash. AI now pumping out the Phoenixes. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Just going to check on the carrier. Yeah, it's chewing through those P500s. Oh. What happened, fire? Uh, I got killed by Matrix. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the lockup just locked up um, an enemy target, but the missile went for him. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that, won't we? Yeah. Just so I notched a missile that I thought was coming from, from north. Whoopsie. <laughs> right into the south. This is what happened. Miss. Oh, well. Come on, let's get a Phoenix hit. They do work, I swear. Oh, we lost an F-14. How interesting, uh, viewers. I snapped a wing, which is why my <sighs> phoenixes went down. Oh, right. Gutted, Simba. Gutted. Right, we have a dogfight. Now, look at this. They're ignoring each other, viewers. This is the beauty of AI. They're just like, okay. They've, they've got set in their little task. He's got set towards Matrix. He's got set towards that guy there, and they just ignore each other. Silly, I know, but we have limits. Right, here we go. We have one of these, viewers. Uh, it's a 1990s extended range Alamo with an IR seeker, like a giant sidewinder. That's not quite right how it works, but to, lay, to the layman it is. Uh, Matrix sees it. One problem with 90s Russian missiles is they have smoke motors, as I can try and show you here. Mm, maybe not. So anyway, they leave a massive smoke trail, even if they are IR passive missiles. 
they will be seen or probably be seen. Uh, which aircraft is kinematically better, the Tomcat or the Sukhoi? Pretty much the Tomcat. Just because, if anything else, it can put its wings back and get really fast, really quick. Whereas Sukhoi always has that big, draggy frame. Oh, look, now here's an interesting thing. Sam's coming out from the Russians. Grumbles which uh, theoretically in the 1980s should have been extremely good missiles. And look at this, an AIM-54 that's all the way over one of Simba's that went dumb. That you can see the gear of there, firing pilots missiles, more some more um, anti-ship missiles, I imagine. Um, as ever, viewers, I apologize for missing 90% of the action. These are all done live and the chances are my camera's in the wrong place and Tomcat just got surrounded by flankers. Right, two SUs down to four, five Americans down. That isn't unusual. You know what? Don't read into it too much, viewers. The starts often give weird results until things settle in a bit. Dark's fighting a guy here with an extended range radar Alamo. Main problem with these, I think, viewers, is just so draggy. Good evasion, a notch. Guys fighting here. Now the problem with these S14s is they've somehow pushed the red stove all the way back into grumble range, into Sam range. Oh, smash, well on dark. Took on a Tomcat, fair and square, all maximum skill level, fully armed and won. Sparrow going in, uh, pretty terrible missile in my opinion, but using it. Phoenix, finally we get Phoenix skills, smashing down. On hostiles, and, and a close range archer. Now this was a really good, even America admits when they got their hands on this 1991, how good this missile actually was. Rust vectored, 1984, the Archer Model 1. Just smashes a Tomcat down. All right, now amazingly, it's just so weird how it works, viewers. In single player, I never had anything like that kill ratio. The Russians have killed twice as many Americans. Put it in multiplayer and all the extra parameters, and it completely changes. Also, look at the brilliant flanking maneuvers uh, these humans have done. The beauty about bringing the humans into the fight. If you put AI into the fight, they just sort of go down the middle, and you can't really stop them realistically. You can sort of script them, but it doesn't really work. Good shot, boys. That's my humans. Perfect fight. Okay, we've got a fight here. Distances are... 20 miles, F-14, fired Phoenix, which in this fight appeared to be neon useless against an uh, Alamo. Ah, we've got ACM going on there. That's an Archer, uh, that's uh, Alamo under. Oh, amazing dodge. Oh, and Dog got shot down. He had coverage from his buddies. Did a good job though, Dark. Uh, right, we've got uh, Phoenixes, which are... Every time I look at a Phoenix, they're at 70,000 feet and going straight up. What is that all about? Cannonballs beat a hasty retreat. Now, interestingly, Reds have retaken Bullseye. After losing Bullseye tactically, they've now retaken it from the Blues. How interesting. Really bad performance from the Tomcat so far, viewers, and I don't know why it is. You're going to have to let me know. You see just as much as me. Yeah, the SA and the Tomcat is nowhere near as good as the F-18. But even the AI, who have kind of omni-aware, lowly simulated SA, SA, are doing just performing very badly. The missiles, they're actually overtaking their own frigging Phoenixes, which is odd, viewers, very odd. He's trying to smash this guy down here, but he's gone, he's gone down, he's evaded the Phoenixes by going low, and it's working all kinds of well. Well, so far, 100% not going the way anyone predicted it. Look at this, a passive IR Alamo. And he's not seen it coming. Otherwise, he would have fled. Another Tomcat down. Wow, the viewers are going to be tray upset. But viewers, we just set these up and I prove I've set them up equally. There is nothing else I can do. Phoenix trapped that guy down and smacked him. Nice work. Uh, the AIM-54 Phoenix, d uh, despite what lots of people say, cannot be guided on the data link viewers. It never could. Yes, there was improvement specification that said it could have been, but it was never actually in service in a state where it could have been guided. Uh, so what I'm saying is the Tomcat has to and always has had to... Is this tracking? Track the target with the radar all the way until Pitbull. Boom! Good shot. Phoenix is working again. Trade. Trade. No! Tomcat wins the dog. No! No one wins the dog fight. The heavy, uh, heavy flanker frame shrugs off that sidewinder hit. Right, and now we have eight Sukhois down to 12 Americans down. And they've just pushed past each other. Look at that. And that may have been a friendly fire. That's slightly worrying. Actually, get 
Phoenix very prone to all active missiles prone to friendly fire. Right, all kinds of sexy going on. Oh, finally, he meets his maker. Phoenix in the face. Phoenix is starting to operate well again. That's nice. Chasing him down. Three yep. line is clear, Matrix. Thank you. We have an IR Alamo. Now, these are dangerous viewers because they tend not to spot them. And that guy wings back, charges head into it. No idea. Tomcats, I'm pretty sure, never had any missile warning systems on them. You know, IR type. Oh. RWR wouldn't warn you about a passive missile, obviously. Okay, the Americans are coming back. 11 Sukhois down to 13 Americans down. And if you can read the scoreboard, a lot of you can't because you're on your cell phones, but if you can read the scoreboard, you can see the costs there. Half a million to Russia, 3 billion to America. Great evasion. Uh, 11 to 14 now. It's Phoenix is appear to be relatively easy to avoid from the flankers. More Phoenixes going out. A lot of AI action going on at the moment. Wings back. Full speed. <sighs> These seem really dangerous. Really dangerous fuels. And look how fast they are. Really dangerous. Wow. That's what's doing the killing. It's those passive Alamos. Oh. Survived. And emerge. Eleven to fifteen. Phoenix chasing. Where are you? Oh, there he is. If nothing else, those Phoenixes are really good at chasing hostiles away, burning their fuel, which is all modelled pretty realistically. Burning a fighter's fuel to zero is as good as killing them tactically. Splash. Uh, yes, fire is engaging with an SU-33, and he dodged this Alamo, which is Splash. nice. But he has. Got himself a man suitor. Simba could use a little help over here. Yep. Uh, I'm about to ditch my missile on turn it hot. Again, it's, it's a my six. Alamo. Oh, fire. Never even got a warning. What a dangerous missile that's turned out to be. Probably missile of the match so far. Phoenix is just not fast enough to trouble the Sukhois a lot of the time. Overview. Simba is attacking. Still sticking to his gun. Sticking to the F-14. He's fired a couple of Phoenixes. Oh, he's fired a load of stuff off. 23 minutes in. 14 Sukhois down. 18 Americans down. And a little pocket of Americans in the middle here just launching their long-range missiles out. In terms of what range they launch them at, it's completely up to them. They decide based on what they th where they think is the best chance of getting the kill. And it seems to be about 40, 50-ish miles They can be used at long ranges, over 100 miles, but typically that would be for anti-bomber. Another one getting chased away. Sukhoi is really good in a dive. Something about the, how the Sukhoi is a model in the game that I've always been very good in a dive. Tomcat, I'm not sure what variant of the missile that was. More Tomcats getting taken down. Well, this is very surprising viewers. And another one. Good evasion, but what about that one? Evaded, but what about that one? Not evaded. Tomcat hounded down. Uh, it was dark, was it? Nice work. Right, 15 Sukhois down to 20 Americans down. Simba has found a foe worthy. And he's fired a Phoenix off. No real anti-ship stuff going on, viewers. I think it's all been dealt with, and it appears to have never really troubled the Americans, which is why I didn't put a lot of time watching it. Tomcat in trouble. Evades an archer. No, evades an adder. What about an archer? Does not evade the archer. to 21. SU-33 is over or performing very well, shall we say. Simba's got bored of AI and is now going for human bait. This guy here avoiding Simba's uh, aim 54s. Ah, Grumble. This is always a problem. We've got Grumbles out. It's the equivalent of... Uh, it's the equivalent of American's Patriot Pack 2, actually, strange enough. Converted to the F-Series and used on 1980s ships. Now two versus one, Simba's seen sense and run away because there's not a lot he can do about two of those. Oh, Simba is awfully short of stores and he's got one, two, three gentleman suitors after him. I do not rate his chances. 
And he's being cornered. They're north and south of him. Can he do something? It's an IR passive one that gets him. At least he tied some resources up. We've got an ACM. Another ACM. Archer takes him down. Wow, underperforming Americans today. This is very unusual, viewers. Very unusual. Just shows you never know how these are going to go until you um, until you turn it on and you're running. AI chases Cannonball and uh, Cannonball's friend away and then changes his mind and goes for this guy here. Easier bait up higher, I suppose. Fires a Phoenix. What's this guy doing? Whoop. Oh, that went right past his little Tomcat bod bod. Oh, it's Bird. Wow, I think it's the first time I've seen Bird today. Welcome. Hello. Right, just fired a... Oh, an IR Alamo. Makes you wonder why America didn't have these IR types of missiles, long-range missiles at the time. Where's that missile going? It is chasing it. It was chasing Dark. Spinning around in circles, and the missile is spinning around in circles after him. 18 2 boys down to 24 Americans down. I'm a dark. Take what's coming to you. He corkscrewed it. Well done, dark. What about this guy? Straight down. Phoenix. Whistles past his ear. Well, tactically, Americans, although well, they're losing it in numbers, probably because of their aggressiveness and the fact they are fighting in a Russian SAM network, have pushed Russia back from here 21 miles. That's it. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. No, they're still taking off. So things are still happening. Let me check the American carrier. Oh, the F-18s are out. The anti-ship F-18s are out. So all 32 Tomcats are airborne and either blown up or doing their thing, pushing very hard. Another reason for the underperformance of the Tomcat viewers is they're operating these grumble, these, operating this SAM net, which can go 80 miles. And when you're operating in, this, I mean, this is Russia's doctrine, really, make people fight in Russia's SAM nets. It's a big equalizer, and it's what's happening here. Bang, Phoenix kill. 19, Sukhoi's down, 225, Americans down. Tomcat, good evasion. Aim 54 at point blank. Uh, no going for a different target. Shoots over Dark's head. These guys here being hounded by Phoenixes, but probably under no real threat here. This guy's under threat. Big stratospheric Phoenix comes down. Just too draggy. Look at the thickness of the missile viewers. Look at the fins. Look how old tech this is compared to a, a modern. A120D or PL15 slows down very quickly. Uh, Dark somehow alive in a, in a batch of Tomcats. I don't know how he's doing it. Like that. It's a notch. It's a radar notch. Beat that missile. Hannibal re-engaging and might tag this Tomcat here. Where is he? Tomcat wires to it. Gets the chuff out of there. But... Close the range missile, Tomcat down. Good shot, uh, Cannonball. Russians have now been pushed over 20 miles back. But look, here's what I was saying. The Americans are having to operate in this horrible grumble site. It's the price for success, viewers. If you push the hostile air wing back, kind of cool because it kind of equals the battle up again. So one problem with the modern stealth fifth gen battles we do is that the SAMs can't f target them, so you don't get this lovely equalizer effect. Oh, Tomcat didn't see it coming because it's passive IR. Boof. Tomcat spamming off missiles. Oh, the missiles. Look at that. I am AI and I am incredibly angry. Even chucks his fuel tanks at him. But, oh, wow, smash. Big 100 pound warhead. Dark's merge. Oh, he's in for a frigging guns fight. He's used all his missiles somehow still alive and is now gunning a Tomcat down. Something I did not think I would see today. Must have initiated stealth coating. Run, Tomcat, run. My favourite plane here is Tomcat, as I'm sure everyone's watching is. Oh, look, it's just outpowered the flanker. Flanker was less powerful, and I think it's actually heavier, so it just couldn't keep up. Look. Oh, this guy's so little threatened by Dark, he's actually shooting at someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, Tomcat. He's just like, you can't catch me up, silly old flanker. Yeah, doesn't help that I'm about a glider. You're a glider, Dark. It's unfortunate. Almost. Oh, your mates are about to get Rwenge on him anyway. In the uh, form of a bunch of Grumbles and Dark. Oh, hello. No, miss. What about that? Can't see it coming. Has no idea that's coming towards him. It's beauty about passive missile viewers. Will he get revenge from the grave? No, he won't. All flankers have taken off uh, in terms of AI. Only humans left. Uh, and the carrier 
It's now empty. Where are all the Hornets? Here they come. Now, here's the problem, viewers. If you watch a 2020s battle, the Hornets will fire from 200 plus miles away with the Lorasms or, or whatever. Because we're dealing with old tech, the best we've got is these. Terrible older AGM 84Ds, max range, maybe 70 miles if you're lucky. So you've got to get right up against the carrier group in nautical terms. 70 miles is nothing. Uh, which makes them tactically horrendous, basically. So they've got to go and get in there and fire their missiles. Which means now the Tomcat's job has changed. It's now protecting the anti-shippers, but they've got to get them within that range. Again, a dynamic we don't see in the 2020s battles. Where you can just take off and launch them. Anyway, dogfight going on, which is super cool. Uh, lots of stuff going on, so let's try and watch Dark. Ha! He had no fuel. Dwyer. Ha! He had no clue that an ET was coming. And finally, a Sidewinder. Missed! And this, oh, taken out. It was four against, I don't know what it was. It was a lot against a lot anyway. Right, ooh, a very rare friendly fire. I don't think I've seen a friendly fire from the very beginning. No, that wasn't. Um, anyway, I was saying, viewers, um, oh, jeez, look at them hound that guy. I am hounding you. Now the Tomcats are much more interested in protecting the anti-shippers because they are vulnerable, genuinely, genuinely vulnerable. So blues, change your shape um, and your objective. I bet almost... I bet 90% of the Russian kills on the flankers on Tomcats have been with that. A missile you can't see coming, or at least a 1970s plane couldn't see coming. A modern plane like an F-35 probably would with its DAS, maybe. Who knows, right? Is it hot enough off burn? Unknown. All kinds of Simba's back in. Matrix is back in. Come on, anti-shippers. They've still got 30, 40 miles to go to get in range. Uh, modern rocket motors or modern turbojets uh, are just so much more efficient in the 2020s viewers. Missiles can go so much further. Simba just going nuts with the big missiles. Long range. Now, will it actually be any use though? Because Phoenix is a great head on, but when you've got flanking targets and cold targets, they tend to break down costs. One million dollars to Russia. Three million dollars to America. Why? Well, it's America stuff's just much more expensive than the Russian gear. Simba's missiles becoming active, and they are tracking. Could get four kills here, Simba. We'll see. Twenty-four Russians down to thirty-three Americans down. You mean one billion, three billion? Oh yeah, I do. Well done, Simba, and you're probably going to get some more here. One point one billion to Russia. Two point nine billion to America. Simba. Oh, a second kill just doesn't materialise. But a third is on the way, maybe. Second kill for Zimba. Well done. Putting those big missiles out can be useful. Here comes a deadly ET. It's going to trouble this guy. Yes, it is. No idea it's coming. Such a fast missile. Unreal. Simba fires at close range, but, but, but. I don't know what happened there. They got snapped a wing. Ah, oh, Simba and his wing doing 1.6 and tried to go evasive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, anyway, it's all about the anti-shippers. Right, get a missile off at him. It should be, it should hit. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Uh, anti-shippers are now 70 miles from the group. They can now fire on the group, but they're probably going to wait until they can get the carrier, uh, which I would do. They, how do they find the ship's viewers? Uh, they've actually got their own. These missiles. Oh, oh, they're firing. Oh, right, words and stuff. Many words. The old missiles have to be guided in by the, the aircraft, or they have to be um, located onto target by the aircraft initially with their own radar. It's ABG-868 or whatever it is in this plane, I forget now. has to find that. Uh, again, the RASMs don't need that. They only have to see the target with an AWACS all the way back here or a stealth up front or something. Big difference in how you can fire them. One of Simba's missiles from about 30 minutes ago is still chasing a guy down and about to get a kill. Huh. How about that? Right, Matrix has found himself in uh, ACM. I would suggest using, well, you use whatever you want. Well, viewers, it's been a very exciting match so far with 39 minutes in, and it has been pretty relentless. Splash. Good kill, sir. Right, so they have to basically get to Bullseye, and that's when they fire. Right, Cannibal fighting a uh, Tomcat who's smashing Phoenixes at him. 23 Sukhoi. The Phoenixes show up on our radar as that's uh, so planes. Cool. You hear that? The Phoenix can be seen by the flanker's radar. Um, so you probably... Won't you lock prob it, but... Oh, it won't lock it, right. Probably, yeah, not big enough to lock. 
it's because it's an old radar. It's an old 80s radar in this SU-33. Actually, I take that back. I may be wrong. Maybe early 90s. I'm not sure. Either way, it's not a modern AESA type radar. Ooh. Flash bird. Well done. So we're going to start looking ahead now, viewers, and thinking how well these harpoons are going to do against these guys here. Well, here's where you start differing from real life and DCS. And DCS, I don't get the feeling it's going to scratch the surface. I don't know. We'll see. In real life, things are different. Flash. Uh, Look at those Neptune missiles, which are really just these, to be honest. And it's different, but in performance terms, they're about the same. They, they're sinking Russian ships in the last few years. Oh, bird. Well, well done. Matrix mopping up. Now he's got his hornet. Human scores. Not working. Scoreboard's broken at the moment, annoyingly. So, never mind. You've all got zero kills. Uh, Matrix. Oh, Matrix has really met his match now. He's got all kinds of humans angry and after him. All Russians will now be humans. Good evasion by, uh, oh, I don't know about that. Only so much you can evade, and a uh, an IR Alamo from that range is not one. Fires in there, protecting his anti-shippers. Mm, still don't know where the other anti-ship... Ah, right, here's the next one. That's uh, group f four. Where's group two? It looks like what's happened, viewers, instead of them taking it off in the correct order, they've all got a mismatch order that's that's gone up. Ah, now we've got a possible jam. I'll give them two more minutes to sort that jam out, and if not, we're gonna have, I'm gonna have to come in as an unjammer. Oh, that is disappointing to see, viewers. So we've got this weird problem now, where parts of these groups have taken off, and they're waiting for their wingmen to take off, who are, I think, jammed up on the carrier. Almost certainly are jammed up on the carrier. That's out of my control, I'm afraid, viewers. It looks like I'll have to go back to scripting the takeoffs. Right, Grumbles are taking the harpoons down. Harpoons are not stealthy, not really. Oh, missed. How about that? I'll take that back. This is firing. I think that's Kirov. Battlecruisers firing his missiles. Has a huge VLS set there, viewers. God knows how many are in there, but lots of missiles. Slava, a bit smaller, but still an impressive uh, VLS set. That's not certainly not going to trouble them. Right, one more look at the um, whoops, one more look at the carrier, and then I'll go and unjam it. Yeah, I'll declare the American carrier as jam, and that's sad. Like, it's, like I said, it's just core game assets. There's no reason for it to fail like that. Uh, I'm jumping in as a shovel. Trash here. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Back to the days of shoveling bugged planes off the carriers. Well, hopefully one day that will get fixed. It'll be very nice. Uh, right, what's going up here? Oh, Sims got himself in all kinds of... Still sticking with the F-14B. Is it genius or is it stubbornness? I just don't know. Dodges a missile. You, you really need to ask that question? Ah, right, I forgot. I forgot, I forgot who Simba was for a minute. But he's just got an angry dark after him. Thanks, Fire. You won't have the rain. What? Did it go after you? No, it didn't. No. Oh, oh got him. Okay. It's like, Good wait, splash. that was tracking him. All right, well done, guys. Uh, right, viewers. I'm just going to got him. And yeah. that's teamwork. Yay! The horn, the carrier's working again, I think. I hope. Oh, please tell me the carrier's working again. All right, it's not working yet, guys. Oh, viewers. Really shouldn't have to do this. I guess I'm going back in and shooting some more hornets. Uh, if you've got some Phoenix on board, you could try and take out their AWACS. It's a legal shot, guys. Ah, god damn it.
Yeah, I fixed it. Supercap is absolutely genius, viewers. Took a hell of a lot of work, but that carrier is now unbugged and operating. Yeah. Blues back in the game. Right. What's going on with the battle? Have I missed anything? Simba and I are locked in a battle. Simba. Yes, you are, aren't you? Oh, Simba's bitten off morning and friggin' chew. He's now dealing with the grumble. Because Jester can't hold a lock on a target for more than 30 seconds. Huh. He's like, I know you fired that missile. Yeah, just and you out. wanted it to go 70 miles, but I'm just gonna lose the lock and not be able to There's find it There's a chance that missile might work, Simba. As it's going around in circles, not moving, not displacing, that missile, theoretically, could actually come back down. What happens now, viewers, so it would normally be, like I said, Phoenix never was, was actually guided by AWACS. It never had that, that chip added. So, what, so this variant, what happens is if it loses guidance from Mother, which is Simba, then it actually goes into inertial mode. It goes to the last point, last known point there, and it will turn its radar on eight miles from that point. And that E2 is probably not going to have actually evaded that basket, as it's called, of coverage. So it may actually work. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Anyway, Dark and Matrix are fighting. Cannonball, come back here. I only have 500 pounds of fuel. Come on. Um, you, need to, you may need to shovel again, cap for cap three. Are you kidding me? He's just not moving on to it. Oh, hang on. I've just got to say a thing. Oh, basket. Dodge Dark. Dark really is on form today. Right, Simba, did it track? It did! Look at me knowing how missiles work. See, viewers, it turned its radar on where it lost thing, that thing, and then it's got a footprint. Like, it's like an oblong shape known as the basket. And if that thing's in the basket, technically, if anything is in that basket that's moving more than its notch filter, then it will track it. Now, the question is, Simba, does it have the energy? Because it's gone, what, 100 miles you launched for that? It's gone a long way. Unfortunately, I bet no. 700 knots... Can someone it's deal with shovel? Downhill. Simba, can you deal with shovel? Can someone deal with shovel? Um, is um, All right, yeah, you can swap teams. because nope. it's a... It died. It died. Oh, look at that, viewers. Right, a great example of how a 1970s missile has worked, though. Uh, right, what's gummed up now? What could possibly be wrong with it now? Cat 3 looks like he's not moving. Well, I don't know, because he may be waiting for Cat 1 and 2. I would suggest waiting for that, guys. I don't know. I really don't know, actually. He's not getting any input from him. He's uh, not moving on to the cat. What does anyone else think? Do you think the Snake 13's bugged or...? All right, Simba's coming in. Simba, uh, now on the plus side, I managed to free up a plenty, so a lot of being fired, and again, we've missed most of it, but that's life. Uh, 95 SAMs have been fired from these Russian ships, viewers. So far, they've dealt with the uh, anti-ship threat so far. Another... Oh, now here's two groups firing at the same time. In real life, you could argue maybe all 24 planes would fire at the same time, but that is a lot of logistical work. You'd have to get 24 airplanes up, protected, with enough fuel so that they could all get up. You know, it takes half an hour or whatever to take them all off. Then get them all in a time on target pattern to target. It's a difficult thing to do, uh, but it would have better results. Anyway, the Russians are... Sitting pretty. Uh, Simba's coming in now to try and take Cat 3 Man down. We'll watch it from Cat 3 Man. I get the feeling that that's the only one left anyway. Uh, there was 24 total. That is six groups. And he is group and he is group six. Oh, yeah. It's the, last, it's the last guy anyway. So we didn't lose a huge amount of Hornets viewers. We lost the three that I killed in about this. We lost one flight. One flight. In the gun Simba. Uh, which I'd say probably won't make a great deal of difference, to be honest, other than making the video longer. Well done, Simba. You got him. Stand by. Yes, he's done, Simba. Right, last guy's taken off. It's Snake Park, Snake Flight, Flight 6. And then that's it. Wow, we are a staggering hour, hour into the battle. Right. Um, huh, here's an interesting thing. An AI has... Oh, landed back on Kuznetsov. One AI Sukhoi survived viewers. And landed. All that's left to fire their missiles are Hawk. And they've only got two because the other two got bugged. That's eight missiles and then snake flight. So I really don't think you're getting through the Russian defences unless you have squadrons and squadrons and squadrons of anti-shippers. And I'm talking 60 anti-shippers uh, time. That's 240 missiles. I would think you'd need something like that. 240 1990s missiles to get through those defences. Even if you get through the high mad, the uh, grumbles, you've got to get through the shorad. Um, which is where it even gets harder. You get the SA-15s and the SA-19 missiles, which have, they have like a thousand of those. So far they've fired 119 SAMs. You can tell that the uh, missiles can be seen already because look, the fire control radar is turned onto them. 
That there would have been a dangerous sight in 1980s viewers. Here's the S300 forts. You, sir. you have to speak up, bird. As there's a lot of um, harpoons all together that may confuse the grumblers here. right but a lot most of those grumbles exploded in mid-air it's like they're losing track for some yeah, reason yeah um it's because the, the complications of targeting these these uh harpoons which are all shadowing each other viewers you can imagine the, the radar complications of trying to deal with that and in fact what we found in dcs and i expect in real life is that shooting all your missiles from one direction is actually better as an attacker than omnidirectional omnidirectional they don't conflict with each other single direction like this they actually they overlap each other they create ghost signals they cause problems for the defender and that's pretty well modeled it really gives you an appreciation for the size of these grumble missiles because they're bigger than the missiles they're shooting down that's how they get their range Plenty of grumbles, so it's you know oh, they'll keep yeah, going. Sure. Yeah, all right. Uh, even Back cannibal cruise missile. Yeah, cannibal shooting them down. Boom. Well oh, done, boys. All right, guys. Um, I don't want to wait another 30 minutes for the uh, next batch to come in um, because they obviously got... I can ruin the surprise for you now. They don't get through viewers. Um, I know because I set it up and I had to test to make sure the grumbles were working. And like I said, you would need at least a whole air wing of anti-shippers to get through that defense. 60 odd per carrier. I know the carriers, you guys say they can carry 90 uh, aircraft and they can. But in wartime, it's about 60 plus a Growler squadron, which is what we've got modelled here. So, um, no, um, we're in this weird position in the 1990s where carrier groups' defensive assets are so much stronger than the offensive assets. This is pre Lorazm. This is pre hypersonic KH 47. There's not much you can do to destroy them, which makes it kind of a boring ending, viewers. But it is probably, almost certainly, a realistic ending. Bear in mind that all these carriers are modeled, all these vessels are modeled in their prime, you know, when they were off the shelf and new. If you look at a new Kroslava, like the one that got sunk the other day, nothing works on them anymore because they're all 40 plus years old. In 1980, assuming everything worked, then they, were, they should have been pretty good. Guys, a bit of an anticlimax ending, but a good fight. All 32 Sukhois were shot down. Actually, one didn't. Uh, America lost 42, so a little bit higher. But remember, America were fighting most of the time in a SAM net because they pushed the two coils back, and that always equalizes things. Um, 113 Russian missiles fired, 52 anti-ship missiles fired, 161 SAMs, and they've got over 1,000, so they weren't going to be troubled. At a cost of $1.46 billion. Uh, America's fired 144 AMRAMs and Phoenixes, uh, 10 Sidewinders, 56 anti-ship missiles, and 124 SM2s at a cost of three point five five billion dollars no one is the winner well maybe america slightly won because russia lost their entire air wing i would say the americans did win even though they did lose uh, most of the f-14s or all the f-14s the f-18 is such a capable aircraft mm -hmm. that the russians now have no air defense so if this was to play out over a couple of days somehow ah. and the americans were getting stocks of harpoons yeah they would continue peppering this until the um, russians were I take that back. You're everything. absolutely right, birds. So the, all the Tomcats are gone. They're not needed anymore anyway. So it doesn't matter that they didn't survive. So the Hornets are going to keep, going to take off, launch the missiles, go back, get more missiles, 
launch them again. Obviously, I can't simulate that, but that's what would happen until eventually the Russians would get slain. So great point, Bird. Now that there's no air defense, they would launch all 18s at once and right. have a mass attack, not these four at a time. Yeah, so you could sit and plan a giant time on target attack, get everyone prepped, everyone briefed, and get that done. So they definitely will get through in one strike. Great observation, Bird. Look at you thinking. Well, right, viewers, there's 1990s done absolutely to death now to a modern standard. I hope it was useful or you enjoyed it, and bye-bye.